Hey guys, and welcome to Let's Click Photography. My name's Dave, and this week we are in the Peak District. But today, we're not focusing on the views, we're not focusing on the location. We are, in fact, focusing on focus, and specifically how to focus, no matter what type of photography that it is that you do. Focusing is such an important part, and it's the first step to ensuring super sharp photography, which is something that most photographers these days strive to get. Now in order to achieve great focus, we need to make sure that our camera is set up to deliver that for us. The first thing that we want to consider is which of the focus modes we want to be in. And specifically there are two types that you want to concern yourself with. Uh, in Canon cameras they're referred to as one shot or servo focus modes. With one shot it will focus on your subject and it will leave your focus exactly where you left it, whether or not your subject moves. With servo mode, it will use artificial intelligence to follow your subject around as much as it can, depending on how sophisticated your camera is, will depend on the results you get from this. And so you need to make a choice before you start to focus of whether you want to be one shot, i.e. you want to pick a focus point and leave that focus point there, or whether you want to be in servo because your subject is moving around. Now there is a third option which is an auto mode where the camera will attempt to detect the subject that you're shooting um, but we're not going to bother ourselves with that today because part of obtaining great focus and great sharpness and great images is taking as much control as we can over the camera and so by starting out and making the decision of what it is that we're shooting today in this instance it's landscape but say it was people animals trains planes automobiles anything that kind of moves you may want to move across into servo so for this shot that i've got in front of me here the landscape doesn't move so i'm going to shoot one shot because nothing's moving i don't need the camera to make any decisions or to track anything at all however this camera that i'm filming on uh, is in servo mode because it is tracking my face as I move around. The next thing we need to do is to choose the area in which we want our autofocus to focus. All digital cameras will have uh, multiple arrays of options for you to choose for focusing. Now there's many different scenarios where the different options may come in handy. For me, whether it be generally anything that doesn't move, I'm going to shoot, choose one point autofocus because in, in order to get great results from your camera you want to take away as much choice as possible from the camera and when you allow the camera to choose the autofocus point over a wide area the camera as intelligent as its programming is is likely to get it wrong at least 25 to 30 percent of the time if not more. I'll show you what I mean there. So we're here on the Canon EOS R and these are the different types of autofocus points that I've got available to me. So uh, autofocus and with face tracking or without, uh, single point, we've then got an expanded single point, uh, we've got an area, a wider area autofocus, a really wide autofocus. So what I want to focus on is this river down here. So let's see if the camera will do that. When we press autofocus, as you can see there, it's actually immediately focusing on the nearest thing that it thinks I might want to be focusing on, which is these trees over on the left hand side here in the bottom left corner. And it doesn't matter how often I come out of that, it won't change that autofocus. That's where the camera has decided that I want to focus. Let's try with this one. The same kind of autofocus area, but now it's going in a vertical. Um, so let's see what this selects. And now this is selecting the trees in the background. So all in all, we can see that if I have a specific thing in mind that I want to focus on, all those modes are utterly useless. Now the important thing to note here and something that you need to get past in order to move away from those area zone focus points is that your camera can actually only ever focus on one plane at any given time. So although there may be boxes all over the back of your screen or in your eyepiece, your camera is really only ever focusing 
on a single plane of focus. Now to showcase what that means, it's actually easier to do that at a really close focusing distance because that will show us exactly what I mean. So I'm using those auto focus zones to focus in on this keyboard. It only ever picks up one plane of focus and that's easily visible on these images. So there's no need to worry that you're not getting everything into focus. There's types of photography where you may choose to go into those autofocus zones. Uh, anything that's moving, as an example, uh, wildlife photography, those zones can be a little bit more forgiving. And so they're really useful in those scenarios, but certainly for anything that is static, then one spot is the way to go because your camera only ever really focuses on one plane anyway. It's just the difference between you choosing where that plane of focus is and your camera choosing where that focus is. But there's another part to the focusing story. There's another part to ensuring you get super sharp images. And that is depth of field. Now depth of field gets talked about a lot in landscape photography, but actually it's really impactful in every type of photography that we do. And so it's a big subject. So we're gonna cover that in the next video along, which is linked right here. So you wanna click through onto that one there. And of course, if you've made it through to this point, then I hope you have found this super useful. So give me a thumbs up. I've been Dave. This has been Let's Click Photography. And from me, for now, ciao.